In this episode, we've explanted a light adjustable lens due to unwanted halos and starbursts that our patients saw. Our plan today is to insert the Bausch & Loam monofocal implant into the ciliary sulcus in a conformation known as optic capture, where the optic is behind the anterior capsule and the haptics are in the ciliary sulcus. Now, intraocular lens exchange is routine in well over 99% of cases, in my experience. This case represents that 1% of intraocular lens exchanges that can become a very complex, very fast. Video posted yesterday, we explanted a light adjustable lens post EI capsulotomy. In episode two today, our plan is to place an LI61AO monofocal lens into the sulcus and perform optic capture where we place the optic posterior to the anterior lens capsule. We started with a dilated pupil at the beginning of surgery, but after explantation of the LAL, we now have a pupil that is much smaller. What I'm going to show you is one hour of surgery in the following five minutes. This eye has already undergone pars plane of vitrectomy. We insert our Bausch & Lohm LI61AO lens into the anterior chamber, which has been filled with viscoelastic. Now, our plan is to dial the haptics behind the iris and into the ciliary sulcus, then hopefully place the optic posterior to the anterior capsule. Because the pupil is meiotic, it's a bit challenging to move the haptics into position, but we eventually prevail. Additional viscoelastic is placed into the anterior chamber to viscodilate the pupil. What I notice is that the optic is not centered. We gently maneuver the left half of the lens optic posterior to the anterior capsular leaflet, then move the right half of the optic completely behind the anterior capsule for optic capture. We then viscodilate the pupil to inspect the position of the lens and it appears slightly decentered. As time passes, the optic then appears to tilt, indicating that there is a lack of capsular support for the haptic that is obscured by the iris at 6 o'clock. We then use our micro forceps to grab the superior haptic and then use the Connor wand to elevate the optic anterior to the iris. What we have is a capsule that is unstable, likely due to loose zonules. So we will not be able to place this lens implant into the sulcus unless we perform intrascleral haptic fixation to secure the lens implant. So we need to get a better view. Therefore, iris retractors are deployed to help us see the capsule. We mark the sclera two millimeters posterior to the limbus. Since we're sitting temporarily, his eyelids are partially obscuring the area of our marks. In retrospect, I should have moved from sitting temporarily to sitting at the top of the head to have better visualization of the sclera at the three and nine o'clock positions. Using a 30 gauge needle, we enter the sclera and feed the leading haptic into our needle. An anterior chamber maintainer is placed at 12 o'clock and another iris retractor is placed at six o'clock. We can see the capsular bag complex now and choose to remove it using our micro forceps. Using two micro forceps in a hand over hand maneuver, we position and grasp the trailing haptic with Ahmed forceps to feed this trailing haptic into our second 30 gauge needle. Now, as we withdraw the right haptic from the sclera, we withdraw the left haptic concurrently. The left haptic can be seen exteriorized first. Therefore, we let go of the right haptic, which is within our 30 gauge cannula, and we focus our attention to the left haptic and grasp it with the Ahmed forceps. And because we need to have better visualization of the left haptic in order to create our terminal bulb, we ask the patient to look down slightly. When he looks down, two things happen. The needle holding the right haptic rotates 180 degrees and number two, the left haptic is drawn back into the eye. Now we have a situation where we can only see the right haptic and we cauterize the right haptic to create a terminal bulb. 
we now have a situation where we can no longer see the optic of the lens and the implant is only hanging on by the right haptic, which still can be seen. We try to bring the optic into view by maneuvering the right haptic when our patient becomes uncomfortable. Because our patient is uncomfortable, we choose to remove our iris retractors. We can now see the optic of the lens. An anterior retractor is used to remove viscoelastic from our patient's eye. Iris prolapse is encountered and managed immediately. Because our patient was becoming uncomfortable and he had a unicameral eye and there was a growing concern that this patient was at risk of developing a suprachoroidal hemorrhage, we elected to bury the right haptic into the sclera, stromal hydrate all our incisions, and conclude the case. So now we have to have that difficult conversation with our patient explaining to him that our goal was not achieved due to complexities that we encountered during their surgical procedure. Because we started the process, it's our duty to do what we can within our ability, if we believe it is safe, to rectify his situation. So in episode three that I'll show you tomorrow, we are going to adapt and overcome and solve this very difficult problem that we have encountered in an attempt to perform routine intraocular lens exchange. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll post episode three tomorrow. Thank you.